Hey everyone, welcome to Postman Tutorial. So in the last video, I mentioned that this particular approach is not going to work, right? So let's see why it's not going to work. Let's let me quickly execute this particular test. Okay. And then see what the problem is. Okay. So I have sent the request and let me go back. So you'll see that it has failed reference response is reference errors response is not defined. Okay. Now, if you would have watched the previous videos, you would have already figured out why exactly this won't work. This won't work because what we are doing here is in this particular test, we are defining this, we are getting this response and then we are defining a variable response. Okay. Within this particular test, right? The scope of this is local, basically within just this test, within these curly braces, we are defining that this is not global, right? So this response, this JavaScript object. Now, if you are trying to refer or get the response here outside in a second test case, then this is not going to work. What we are going to, what we have to do in order to solve this, either we have to basically define a variable again here, the response variable and fetch the response again, the JSON response. Okay. And have that JavaScript object response object stored here and then run it. Okay. So now if I'll run this again here, okay, let me go to the response. You'll see that validate JSON data type is successful. Okay. So this is fine in this particular case. Okay. So here uh, this test is failing. Okay. Let me check. So validate JSON data type is passed. Then we are expecting this to be a number. Okay. State to be a string. Okay. So this was a string, right? So state is a string. If you go to the body, so we are, it's a string, right? So we are, we should be expecting a string there. That's why it was failing. So if I run this again and see the results, all the test cases should be passing in this particular case, right? So now you'll see validate JSON data type because we have declared a constant, a variable response, and then storing the response JSON into a JavaScript object. And the variable which holds that object is a response. And then we are getting the details there. Okay. Now this is not the very good approach. If you have, say, for example, a requirement to fetch that particular response again and again in different test cases, it's always good to define it at a global level. So what I'll do is I'll simply cut that from here. Okay. And I'll define it outside of the test cases. Okay. So now because this is outside of the test cases from this first test and the second test as well, so now if I remove this, okay, this statement as well. So now I have just defined it at one place global, right? And now this particular test should also be having access to that particular variable, right? The JavaScript object, a variable that holds uh, uh, the variable that holds JavaScript object. Okay. And this particular test should also have that access. Okay. So if I send this now, it should work exactly the same way. Right. So there is no failure anymore, even though we don't have that response variable defined here and the JSON data or JSON file stored as a JavaScript object in that particular variable named as response. Okay. So this is the basic stuff that you need to basically, and this is why we were learning all of that scope things. Uh, what is global scope? What is local scope? Right. So that is where now everything will start to tie up together and now you will be able to define your test cases in much better way and understand everything in much proper. Okay. So this is briefly about that particular problem and how you're going to solve it. So tomorrow, say for example, I usually it's not a good practice to have multiple expect statement. If you are validating different things, it's better to have another, another test for this state as well. Right. So then, I'll simply go ahead and cut this, create another test. Okay. So I'll say PM dot test and then I'll simply name a test. I'll say validate JSON data type is, uh, this is state, right? So I'll say validate JSON state data type is string. Okay. And then callback function, which will use the arrow function as it's more, more neat and clean. So basically, and then here we'll put that PM dot expect to be a string, the state to be a string. So this, this becomes our third test case. And now we don't have to define this response again and again. We can use that because it's in a global scope. We can use it in any of the test case that we are going to write. So if I send this now and go to the results, you'll see another test case, which is passed as well. Okay. 
So this is briefly how you are going to tackle with any of these problems and issues. If you have your basics clear, you will be able to figure out the issues just by going through the error codes that you are getting or error responses and solve it yourself if you if your concepts are clear. So that's why get yourself get your concepts clear the basics clear and rest everything will fall along and you'll be able to learn api testing and automation very so that's all for this video i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching